Now, the reason for bleeding disc brakes is that sometimes your hydraulic brake lines can actually become contaminated with dirt, air, or in some cases, even water. Obviously, that results in poor braking performance. So today, we're going to look at how to bleed the SRAM hydraulic road disc brake system so you can get stopping better again. So what you are going to need is a bleed kit. So in this case, I've actually got a SRAM professional bleed kit. Uh, inside of here, I've got the dot fluid oil, I've got the syringes, hose attachments, all of the necessary things as well to space out the caliper and make sure we do the right job. Also, you're going to need a workshop towel or a lint-free cloth, some nitrile gloves, uh, isopropyl alcohol, and also a toe strap, or failing that, an elastic band. That'll come in very handy later on. So today I'm going to be bleeding the front disc brake. So first of all, I'm going to remove the front wheel and then remove the little clip that's on the pin there. And then with a two and a half mil hex wrench, remove that pin and then remove the pads. And then I'm going to put in there a little bleeding block. Now that block that I'm going to put in there is actually really useful because it actually stops the pistons from moving and potentially popping out if you were to touch the lever. So make sure you put that in there to keep safe. So this is where you really do need those nitrile gloves. First up, we're actually going to screw the bleed clamp assembly into the syringe, and then we're going to fill it half full, or as close to half full as you can get, with the dot fluid. So keep a good eye on that. And then when it's about half full, stop. And now we're going to Hold that syringe up this way and with a shop towel. Just basically, what we want to do is get rid of this air. So, I'm going to gently force that up using the towel to catch any residue and remove those air bubbles. So you are going to have a little bit of fluid come out. Maybe give the syringe a couple of a couple of taps just to release any more air. Give those clamps a good wipe down and then lock the hose in position. So it's like that. So the next step is actually to remove as many pockets of air that are in this dot fluid as possible. Now, if you look at it, it doesn't look like there's any air in there, but there is. It does get trapped in. So how are we gonna do it? Well, make sure that that clamp is still locked down and then gently pull the plunger. And as you can see, look at that. Look at all those bubbles that are rising. And then gently let it back. And repeat this process quite a few times. We want to get as many of those bubbles out as possible. You may want to hold it and just flick it a few times just to get rid of them. Try and get rid of as many of those air bubbles as possible. It's going to help in the long run. So just be very patient with it. And just keep repeating. Then with the other syringe, you're going to do exactly the same, but fill it just quarter full. And then we'll move on to the next step. Now, a quick check to do is actually to measure that the blade of the lever is not more than 90 millimeters away from an imaginary line using the brake lever hood as a guide. If it is, then the bleeding procedure is just not going to work properly and you're not going to get effective braking. So if that lever is more than 90 mil, then just put a two and a half millimeter Allen key in there and just turn it and just bring that lever inwards and then re-measure. Make sure it's under 90 mil. So now with the corresponding brake lever, Peel back the lever hood and then undo that bleed port screw. Keep it somewhere safe. And if there's any excess oil at all or dot fluid, just, remove, just wipe that away. Keep it nice and clean. Then you're going to want to thread the quarter full syringe into that bleed port. So next, we're going to remove the little bleed port screw of the caliper. In with the bleed kit, we actually get a little T10 key. So you're just going to want to remove that. And then just wipe away any excess that may have popped out. And now with your half full syringe, simply screw that into the bleed port of the caliper. It's important you get them the right way around. So that's the half full one in there. So now we're going to release those hose clamps and then gently on the caliper syringe, push that in so that the lever syringe goes to about half full. Now you will see a few air bubbles probably pop up into there. Don't worry about that. 
but just make sure it doesn't go any more than half full and then just lock down that clamp on the lever. So using your toe strap or elastic band, just hold the lever blade in up against the handlebar there. Make sure it's nice and snug and doesn't move. So now you're gonna to wanna to hold the syringe vertically like so, and then gently pull outwards. As you can see, there's some air there coming out of the caliper. It's exactly what we wanna be doing, removing all of that air. And then when the bubbles have finally stopped rising, gently push it back down in. Just repeat that process a few times just to make sure that we're getting all the air out. As you can see, there's some more air coming out of the caliper. So now what we're gonna to need to do is actually remove the elastic band from where it's holding the lever in place. But at the same time, keep the lever in place with our hand. And then you're gonna to wanna to gently push the caliper syringe inwards, and at the same time, just allow the lever, just give it a little bit of resistance with your hand, just allow it to return to its normal position. So once the lever's returned to its normal position, simply clamp that hose and unscrew the clamp from the caliper and then refit the bleed port screw. Uh, it's to one and a half Newton meters. Now that's not a lot and it's very fragile down there. So don't be tempted to torque it up loads. Otherwise you'll end up stripping the thread. Okay, so now we're going to release the clamp on the hose and then simply pull and release a few times just to remove any bubbles from the reservoir here in the lever. Then you're gonna to wanna to squeeze the brake lever into the handlebar and out back 10 times, and then repeat the process again, pushing and pulling, trying to remove any air from the cylinder up here. And just repeat that process two or three times. Just wanna get all of the air out of the system. So now that you've got all the bubbles out of the system, just apply a small amount of pressure, just back into the lever. That way, no air is gonna get back into the system. And then close off that clamp on the hose, and then unscrew it and then refit the bleed port screw on the top of the lever. Now with your isopropyl alcohol, simply put some onto a cloth and then give just a clean to make sure that there's none of that laying around because it's not particularly good for any rubber or handlebar tape. And then you can do the same thing as well, just down there on the caliper, and make sure there's none of that hanging around. So now just remove that bleed block and then refit the pads and your wheel and then give the brakes just a couple of little tugs and make sure that there's no leaks at all from any of the seals. There won't be though if you followed my instructions carefully. Right, well I hope that your disc brakes are now working perfectly. Let me know in the comments down below how you got on, keen to read them as ever. Also remember to like and share this video with your friends and if your disc brakes don't need bleeding but just a little bit of TLC, click just down here to find out how.